Hey, welcome to NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. And welcome to our special, very special show today. We're going to be looking at the Daytona 500, the 50th running, and NASA's 50th anniversary. All things NASA, all things NASCAR. It's actually a nice combination. And Franklin, you weren't there, but we're going to show you some of the things that we did when we were down there. Because not only did we get to see an incredible race, we also actually got our hands dirty, got in the pit a little bit with some astronauts that came Yeah, down. we worked with uh, two Hubble astronauts, uh, Drew Foistel and Mike Good. And also, we had a pretty big NASA exhibit there showing the relationship between NASCAR and NASA. And you'll be happy to know, Franklin, that uh, based on your tutelage, I've actually taken the ESA to a whole new level, along with Chris, of course, where not only did we ask questions about NASA, but we also asked questions about NASCAR. He took it to a new level because once you see this ESA, the tide turned on him, and you'll get to see how he reacted. That's yeah, enough you know information. When, whenever, whenever Blair jumps out in the forefront and really starts explaining something to a T, I want to go <laughs> kind of get to Chris and say, hey, Chris, yeah. what really happened? I tell you what, let's go check the ESA out, and you let us know what your comments are afterwards. You know, so, I'm, I'm surprised okay. at your lack of confidence. That, this is disturbing. All right, Wonder Boy. What do you think is faster in the zero to 60 time? Do you think it would be the Ares 1 rocket or a stock car? Well, I read over there it said zero to 1,000 in 60 seconds, so. This must be a trick question. Stock, stock car. Stock car. Well, actually, your, your husband's was stock car. Space shuttle. No, oh, no, no, no. Stock car. Stock car does. Stock car. What do you think? All uh, right, stock car. Well, would you be shocked if I told you actually a, a stock car can beat a shuttle in the zero to 60 time? Again? Mm hmm. Because when a rocket takes off, it takes a while to get it up to speed. Yeah. And an NASCAR can just take right off. Definitely a, a Aries one. Oh, oof. Ooh. Au contraire. Now, how long does it take for a uh, NASCAR driver to typically finish a 500 mile race with no cautions? Three hours. Now, three hours is a long time. How long do you think uh, the Aries one rocket, which is going to be the new rocket going back to the moon, how long it takes to complete 500 miles? An hour. An hour? Uh, I'd say 30 minutes. Probably 104 seconds. Four, five hours? Four, five hours? Would you like to go to the moon? No. No? No, I don't like to fly. Now, in 1969, Daytona 500 was won by Leroy Yabra. What did NASA do in 1969 that was so significant? They landed on the moon. They landed on the moon. 1969. 1969. Landed on the moon. That's exactly right. Landed a man Went on the, the moon. moon. Landed a man on the moon. Very right. good. Who won the 500? Mario Andretti. Richard Petty. Kale Yarbrough. It's not Kale. Kale actually uh, lost out. Uh, it's a guy by the name of Leroy Yarbrough. In 1969, on July 20th, they landed on the moon. 1976, NASA first landed uh, a lander on Mars it's called Viking 1. Who won the 500 in 1976? David Pearson. David Pearson. Rovers on the moon. No, not the moon, Mars. Yeah, yeah, very good. Right. Do you remember the name? Do you remember the name? Viking. Yes, very good. In 1998, Dale Earnhardt won his first Daytona 500. Wow. Dale Earnhardt Sr. Right. What significant event took place in 1998 for NASA? Sort of a, Any hints? a foundation was, was laid out. <laughs> Up in space. was laid out. Is this the first uh, mission to the International Space Station, or the first, uh, let's see, no, 98, that would be the, maybe the first element was launched. Yeah, very, yeah, very oh. good, very good. 2003, a guy by the name of Michael Walter wins the Daytona 500 in dramatic fashion. What did NASA do? In 2003. Oh, with these the Mars rovers. Yes, yes. Yeah, there we go. Very good, right. very good. Yeah. spirit and opportunity. Opportunity, oh, yeah, absolutely. Don't you want to be part of NASA? I think I should be asking the questions of you. This is more small-time gimmicks by a tall guy. Now give me that back. So what's STS stand for? Uh, what does STS stand for? As in like STS-118? Exactly. Um, oh, you 
<laughs> just aren't there yet, are you, buddy? No, no, no. I, no, I can, I'll get this. No, I'll get this. I, you're, it's a little bit of role reversal, but I'll get it. That's space, transportation. Shuttle. Oh, oh, so close. Uh, a space station the finish is right, right? The first two parts were right. Service. Service. Is that right? Service mission? It's OK. Uh, Better like next time. <laughs> Space transportation. Come on, it's space transportation system. system. Yes, Exactly. Okay. You got it. Jerry Ross. Yeah, OK, yeah. Okay. My hero, Jerry Ross, okay. uh, yes, space too. walker extraordinary. Okay. And I believe the other one was uh, Franklin Chang Diaz. Very good. He's a, he's a good friend of ours. What's the chances of going eight times, breaking the record? You think you think you're uh, think you're astronaut zero. worthy? Zero? Uh, probably not. Not going to happen. Not gonna uh, happen. It was a different time and a different place. The missions are. We're going to start going to more of the long duration mission, missions and going okay. to the space station. Okay. So hopefully, when I get back from Hubble, I'll be able to transition and get into the. Uh, the uh, International Space Station flow and get to go visit oh, that. Man. That's great. Or he could be an eight-time guest on NASA Edge. Hey, now that yeah. I would do. Yeah. Oh, I'm great. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Hey, hey, you're watching you. NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. Hey, welcome back to NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. Oh, dude. Why are you going to take a dig? Like, oh. <laughs> What'd you think? I mean, uh, that was unbelievable. I, I, I missed the, I forgot about the whole first part of the uh, He took it ESA. to the next level, didn't he? Dude, STS? That's, that's pretty what, sad. What dude, what does NASA what? stand for? Like, why are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I want to hear this. What's NASA stand for? I, no, I just, So see, go ahead, go ahead. What's NASA stand the for? The National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Okay, not bad. At, the, at least the interview with Kurt went better because he's a great guy. Let's not focus. Yeah, but you on... know why the interview went better? You weren't even involved in the interview. Oh, now see, that's it, what it, we it, it, do. it was due voice. Blair, can I, can I ask you one question? Yes, sure, please. Go ahead. On your desk. Yes. What is that? <laughs> what is that right there? It's a model. A model of what? <laughs> a space shuttle. That's incorrect. That's the orbiter. Okay, we got Space shuttle is the entire system. The, 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 look, Come system on. is the key word here. You know, you, you I, I, know, I tell you what, no, you know no, what no. that is? No, no, you know what that is? Old school. I, I tell you what, hey, look, we had a great interview with Kurt Bush. Let's get, let's get, let's get back on the, on, the, on, the, on the game plan here. And hey, Frank, let's, well, let's switch seats while we're on the Let's roster. check out the <laughs> cool interview we had Kurt Bush, Drew Foisel, and myself. We have two highly trained individuals here from different professions, but yet they have some common characteristics. And I know, Drew, you're a big racing fan, and I think you have a question to Kurt. I do. Uh, what I wanted to know is how do you, what differences you see in this car, a car of tomorrow, versus the cars you're used to, you know, what you had raced in pre years previous, handling or acceleration or anything. What, what's really changed for you guys? NASCAR wanted to go to a bigger, boxier car with this, and the main reason for aerodynamics to create more side-by-side -side racing and more nose-to-tail racing on what you used to see in the past. Uh, it takes longer to get up to speed because of the aerodynamics. It's not as slick through the air. And then uh, the way that it handles in the corners, the way the front end steers, you're really trying to fight the car more now because it, it's wanting to, to, to drive like an older school car. So it's, a, it's a blast from the past, so to speak. Of course, you're wearing your outfit that you were in the car, and it's a lot of the technology is very similar to what you're going to be wearing up in space with your UVA suit. Uh, what, how does your suit here protect you and keep you cool and, uh, and keep you from, let's say, in case of a fire or something that happens to uh, prevent you from burning up? Yeah, the suit is primarily made for fire protection. And there's three layers to the suit. Uh, and then you, I wear actual um, another layer with underwear all the way. So it's full body. So you have four layers total. And you wear protective gloves as well and shoes. It's supposed to buy you a minute to a minute and a half worth of time when the car's on fire to help try to pull the pin to get out of the car. And when you pull the pin, that'll extinguish the, the fire extinguisher and uh, the rayon that's in there. And so it just buys you time. It's not fireproof, it's just fire resistant. Now how's that compared to what you're gonna be wearing up there? Well, I just I have a question. So is that that's like a Nomex suit or you're wearing Nomex undergarments yep. as well? Nomex and Nomex. Okay, so this this is a Nomex flight suit, but we wear these when we're flying in the jets. 
Uh, in space, we don't really have fire protective systems, but we have cooling systems. And I don't know if you guys wear a cooling undergarment or not uh, during the races, or? Some drivers do, and some just muscle their way through it. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, we have temperature extremes in space. You know, the nice. vacuum of space, it's like, plus 250 degrees Fahrenheit in the sun and minus 250 degrees in the shade. So from one side of your hand to the other is a huge temperature difference. So we wear uh, an undergarment that's a cooling garment, has you know little tubes of water that run through it. And we circulate uh, cool water to keep us cool and or to keep us warm, depending on what we're feeling. Very space. similar to what cool suits are, are used yeah. for us. Now how hot can it get in one of the NASCARs? It's usually 30 degrees warmer than whatever it is outside. And then, uh, let's see, how long are you guys out on the track for a given race? How many hours? Usually it's four hours. You just yeah. bank on four, and uh, some races are a little shorter. There's a lot of similarities in, in terms of G-forces. I know you're, you're pulling some Gs going around that turn, and you're also going to be pulling some Gs when you're up on that shuttle uh, taking off. So what's, what's the max G-load that you encounter uh, on this track? In a stock car, you usually see about three Gs, which is three times your weight. Right. And you, you do it for a, a long duration at the bigger right. tracks. Now, at the short tracks, you don't feel it as much right. as long. But uh, four hours worth of it, right. uh, it, it's quite a ride. And it's very intense. You're very fatigued afterwards just because of, of the pressure that it exerts on the body. And is it four Gs um, through your seat of your pants or through the side? Or how do you mostly experience those that load? Yep, there's lateral and then there's vertical. And so we get a share of both. Yeah. And so you feel it. At bank tracks, you're getting pushed downward. Right. At flat tracks, when you're cru cruising around the corner, you're getting pushed out to the side. Right. So that's a great question. There's both lateral and vertical. That's similar in the in the jets. We get the same. We get that same G load basically from our head down through our rear ends. In the shuttle, it's all going through your chest as you're launching. So you never feel those other loads. You're but sit, yeah, you're back. sitting back, and the velocity vector is basically you know straight out through your eyeballs. So um, or the, the G loads back the other way. And, but we only pull about three Gs on launch as well. That's our maximum G load that the shuttle's designed to. Uh, to Are you gonna experience anything on landing? Uh, landing, it, it really only gets up to like two-ish, 2 1.6, okay. which is a lot when you're coming from zero G. When you've been in space for 12 days right. with no load, then suddenly you come back into a, a gravity environment. You know, it feels like everything's got bricks hanging off them. You know, your right. hands, your head, the whole. Well, I tell you what, I understand, uh, I'm looking over, I see my co-host in the background, and what he's trying to do right now, he's going to try to get you to, to fly in a shuttle, to actually fly a shuttle. And I think Drew wants to get a chance to drive one of the cars. That's right. I wonder if there's a way you could kind of swap by you. We're so close yeah. and shaped. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I could probably wear your suit, man. We'd no one would know. So, so, I've been known to be in outer space on my own someday. So maybe on the day of the race, you can actually you know, get into the suit and drive the car. I don't then. think I want to do it on the day of the race, because I think the team needs to win that day. So uh, probably not a good idea to have me in there. Hey, Kurt, well, thanks a lot. Hey, you're watching NASA Thanks, Edge, man. an inside cool. and outside look at all things NASA. Welcome back to NASA Edge. Hey, an inside and outside look at all things NASA. Chris, man, you did a good job. That oh, was a good interview. Thank you, sir. Yeah, they were they were great to work with. I mean, uh, Kurt's a really uh, stand-up guy. And Drew, obviously, uh, very knowledgeable and uh, and just had a, had a... Yeah. Well, I'm in about NASCAR. Oh, okay. I mean, right, find right, out some right. stuff about uh, the comparisons between the two. Th that was a cool thing, to see how, how similar they are. It, it was cool to see that, that both of those guys actually take a, a good amount of Gs in, you know, in the, uh, in the uh, shuttle. Yes. Right. STS. And the uh, NASCAR on the turns. Th thank you. And I'm glad you brought that up because just for the record, the base of the model <laughs> does say on shuttle, that? not orbiter. It, I mean, it says shuttle, space shuttle. It doesn't uh. say orbiter, even though I know that you're correct. I do not doubt you. Always, you. No, you always got to verify it, information yes. when you... Uh, I agree, and I'm, I'm embarrassed that this is on our set, but it's staying for today, and I'll get it corrected later. My bad. Okay, I'm just saying. That's, for, your, that's your task. Okay. Yes, that's... Yes. Yeah, so. And, uh, you know, that's. I'm just happy to be here, so there you go. Now, I'll tell you what, you know, one of the things we also had a chance to do with Drew was actually change a tire on Tony Stewart's car at the Daytona Experience, which was kind of fun. Yes, and uh, we did quite well, actually. Um, I spent a, quite a bit of time uh, rehearsing down there and using some of the tools, and that was that was really neat. Let me tell you, I mean, quite an experience. Yeah, it was pretty. It was it actually was pretty challenging because uh, you know I had the jack, you had the tire, and Drew was uh, actually using the uh, air wrench. Uh, yeah. It's not as easy as you think. And this guy's on TV. They actually change all four tires during the race. It's incredible. Yeah, and the speed with which they operate. I right. think we got our time down to to like um, I want to. 
let's say 15 seconds. Yeah, something like uh, that. But it, they, they do it in like nine. Well, that would be cool. And, and, you know, when you think about the cars that we have today and how long it takes for us to change a tire, it's like they're doing it in like a fraction of the time. Oh, oh it, yeah. I'm in shock for about 30 seconds when I have to change a tire uh, out, out in my car. <laughs> it takes so, you 30 seconds yeah, to get into right. the trunk. Yeah, just to convince myself to get out of the car. Speaking of cars, you know, NASA has a lot of technology out there that is uh, transferring over into uh, the uh, cars that are made today. Uh, and um, it's, it's going to help the cars that we drive become better down awesome. the road. Even the race cars, too, right? Even, yeah. even the race yeah. cars, you know. Um, but I hate to be selfish, but I mean, well, I want to know what's going to help uh, me and my car uh, driving to and from work. I, not that you're looking at me like I'm selfish. I, I just think it's important. You got that look at me. Like, what am I doing? It would be good to, number one, have some of those power tools on the side of 95. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Especially when you're trying to get one of those space tools into the wrench and you couldn't actually get it. I I knew that was going to happen. I knew that's what you were doing. You were waiting to bring that up, and I don't appreciate that. (laughs) Frankly, what kind of technology Chris can we two, add to my zero. car? Yeah, well, Chris well, two blazers. Well, n- number one, I'm going to talk to you about uh, better brakes. Okay. And NASA's, oh, nice. NASA's search for heat tolerant space materials led to a composite materials for brake linings that stand up under friction temperatures up to 650 degrees, wear, wear longer. Yeah. And cost less. That, you said enough. That's perfect. That's right. What else do they have? And another technology has to do with <laughs> engine lubricants. A plasma spray coating eliminates the need for liquid lubricants in certain engines. The NASA technology may lead to lighter, cheaper, and more efficient compact cars. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'd actually need that right now because I'm driving an SUV. Uh, uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> uh, sell it today. And you got to get a, a lighter, cheaper car. Dude, I'm, come on. At gas prices, I'm upside down. Yeah. I, <laughs> I also, I, I hear something nowadays like in these, in these engines, they have this uh, heat resistant paint. The heat resistant paint has to do with inorganic paint per, uh, that protects the hot parts of automobiles like exhaust systems, firewalls, brake drums, and engine manifolds. The paint that was developed by NASA technology is going to be incorporated into the cars of uh, the future. You know, uh, Kurt actually talked about that when we had a chance to talk to him on the side about the, in- the engine paint, uh, yes. the heat of paint, and he actually talked about how uh, they sprayed that on certain parts of the block. Now we were down at the Daytona 500. Right. We got to see that along right. with right. Uh, Mike Good mm-hmm. and uh, Drew Foistel. And I tell you, if you've never been to an event like that, it's mind blowing. I mean, the co- competition is fierce. The energy is incredible. And it's just amazing to see these guys driving around the track at like a gazillion miles an hour, probably just as fast as the ISS is rotating, uh, flying around the earth. These guys are flying at top speed and we got to see it firsthand. For someone not being a NASCAR fan, being at the event, you know, it's like the first, I would say the first 50 laps of the race was unbelievable. Really Somebody excited. Hit the concession stand. Yeah. I was going to say, were you in the infield or were you in the concession stand, you know? No, we were right there above the, pit, above yeah. the pits. So yeah, it was cool. and, yeah, and it, it, was, cool. it was quite impressive. And actually, we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. But Absolutely. I just wanted to set the stage because it was quite an event. So right. uh, you're watching NASA Edge. And inside and outside, look at all things NASA. right on the track at the Daytona 500. It's kind of like being on pad 39A at the Kennedy. Later today, we're going to be watching the winner of the 500s come around turn four, down the straightaway, and crossing the finish line. Hey, you're watching NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. And remember, if you're not first, you're last. I'm on fire! I'm on fire! In honor of 50 golden years of this great American race, reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Biggity, biggity, biggity. Let's go racing, boys.
That was nice. It's pretty cool, wasn't it? Amazing, actually. It looked like Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Into right. the evening, actually, you could tell it was. A, it, it lasted quite a long, long time. Long day, yeah, yeah. sure it was. was. But it was awesome. It's worth every minute right. of it. Yeah. In fact, I got a question. Okay. okay. I noticed that when someone wins NASCAR, they do this little, little bit, uh, burnout circle. They stay. They do la- uh, Do circle spin out, spin outs, right? Okay. So, um, do we have anything like that for the shuttle when when it lands from a mission? I mean, do we do a victory lap around the around the uh, airstrip? Well, uh, actually, I, I don't think it could handle that. Uh, as of lately, the the shuttle has actually been doing like a flip before it docks with the space station. That's like uh, a, 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 a good call. That's not that's yeah, not, that's not bad. bad okay. Flips, yeah. you okay. Know? And they're also taking pictures while they're doing it. That's true. That's that's he, bold. He, see, he's good. Yeah, very good. Nice, hey, nice shot. Wasn't Frank. it pretty cool that our boy Kurt actually helped his uh, t- uh, teammate Ryan Newman? Yes, but you, a flag. yes, but you know I'm really sensitive about that because. Why is that? Um, well, um, the audience doesn't realize this, but we started a NASA Edge fantasy draft, NASCAR fantasy draft. Right. And within, uh, within our group. Within our group, right. we just drafted some drivers, and uh, I had Kyle Busch. Just for fun. As my, no, yeah, no money involved at right. all, because we can't afford it, and it's illegal. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, so Kyle Busch was, was my driver, and he led, like, the majority of laps. And I had several victory celebrations throughout the evening, right. only to be dashed at the last minute. So... I'm well, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's a long season. We'll have to see what, uh, what happens at the very end. I know you're in the lead as it stands right now, but that's okay. I'm in third. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to remain silent. Well, that, that's okay. That's okay. Well, you know, we did have another... Do you even know your drivers? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. cool. But we do have another sports-related announcement. What's that? That we should t- share with the audience. It's our, our recent visit to Bristol, Connecticut. That's true. Yeah, we were on the Mike and Mike show uh, back on uh, May 28th. You might rem- remember uh, the little bobblehead that, that was on the table. Yeah. Showed up there, and it's still there, apparently, at, at and last it, check. And, in fact, we uh, brought some space food on, uh, on the set for Galt to try, and uh, we had a good time with it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. He ate... All of it. I mean, just oh. I mean, I mean you know, the, the Fiesta chicken he loved. And so that was great. Yeah, it sure was. But it was very inspirational. Was it? Yes. Okay. And in fact, I, I have something here that I've prepared in advance um, that I, I, I need to enlist your support. I have put together a proposal, and I would like to enlist you guys' support. Okay? You ready for this? Shoot. Okay. 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 As of today, I'm officially putting my media not pursuits on hold. Instead, I'm offering my talents, my gifts, and I am campaigning to become NASA's first commissioner of astronautics. And my campaign to become commissioner of astronautics involves three platforms. I'm gonna institute an annual astronaut draft wherein each directorate or division would receive a predetermined number of draft picks to fulfill their missions. Okay, so an astronaut draft. The number two, create a series of astronaut scouting combines uh, to help various directorates and divisions gauge uh, the NASA astronaut talent pool. These combines would occur prior to the draft at at key training facilities such as the MBL and and, uh, uh, Desert Rats. And then finally, merge the mission schedule with a solid playoff model. Okay, and, and, and maybe not playoffs because that, that might be too difficult. So I was looking at something like a bowl game system where each director, based on performance, gets a mission bid. And then those mission bids become sponsored, like the Chick-fil-A uh, Hubble mission or the Home Depot ISS servicing mission. And you go like that. And then I've got a whole marketing campaign that I could, I could outline for you. But I, I need your support. Uh, at the end of this broadcast, if you go to our blog, my proposal will be on the blog, uh, ready for comments. But I think... NASA's astronaut selection uh, process uh, could use a, a retooling, and, I, and I'm offering my services to do that. Wow, uh, I, I I don't know what to say. What, what do you think? I mean, can I can I uh, enli- make you my campaign manager, Franklin? Since you Franklin. are not expressing doubt right away. We, um, well, from from. This- uh, I don't know. I'm astronaut kind of draft. Astronaut draft. Well, I do How know. cool is in, that? Instead of, since we're going with the bowl, you want to keep it like the bowl system. Instead of the BCS, we'll call it the STS. Okay, see, now that's not really a support. <laughs> that's, a, that's a dig at the whole program. I, you know, I'm... Hey, you're, <laughs> we're watching NASA Edge. <laughs> and inside and outside, look at all things NASA. And keep an eye out for the astronaut draft that's coming next year. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs>
Here we are signing the wall at Daytona. Hopefully nobody will mess this up. We'll put something here for the Hubble crew. You're not allowed to do that. You'll be in big trouble, mister. Oh, very sorry. All right, very sorry. <laughs>